what is up guys in this video i want to go over some advice that should make you code better and more efficiently and just some general advice for being a good coder so the first advice has to do with comments and a general rule for using comments is if it's not clear, you should add a comment, of course, so you can remember how to use it later. Of course, this also means you should not convolute your code with too much comments because then you won't be able to read the code itself. But the main rule with commenting is that you should only use it if you think someone is going to need it later or if the function is not obvious enough. As you may have noticed in this first example, it doesn't really rely on any comments to make it readable, which means all of these comments are just convoluting your entire code. As for the second one, you might have noticed that there's going to be a code or a line of code that's a bit longer than it should be. And it's not really clear what it does. And that's usually where it would be a very good place to place a comment. Just make sure it is clear, concise, and that it helps you in the future. There's a lot of rumors that good code shouldn't require commenting, but we're not all that good. And sometimes it is really required for us to remember how our code works. So use it as often as is necessary. Just don't complicate your code more than it should be. The second tip I can recommend for being a good coder is to make your code readable rather than concise, because I mean, anyone can turn or simplify code into bytecode to its most simplest form. It just makes it impossible to fix later without comments or without any idea of how it works. You want to make sure that the code can be read like a real human being, because that just means you can go back to it and you can edit it as much as you want. The example I have in this picture right here is something that they have in Python, which is called list comprehensions. And list comprehensions are great for simplifying your code and making it a lot smaller, but sometimes it completely confuses your code. And it really made it hard for me once to understand. I had to break it down for about 20 minutes because I could not remember what I did inside the list comprehension. And as you can see, the second example that says readable has the exact same code as the list comprehension, except it is something that makes much more sense. So I definitely recommend you make sure your code is more readable rather than concise, because that's going to save you and a lot of others a lot of time in the near future. The third piece of advice I would like to give is that when you copy code, it's really important you understand what the code does. Don't just copy it as a complete block without understanding what it does first. And that's why I recommend you copy it line by line and try to understand each line fully because otherwise you won't be able to maintain this. And half of the time when I used to copy code, you would have some things that just don't even contribute to the code you're working on. There'll be variables that don't even make sense. It's just going to suck to have to edit so much code or to have twice as much code as you should have. As you can see in this example, I provided two useless variables that do nothing with the code. And the only thing we want the code to do is to get the connection. So this is a very abstract example, but just make sure you understand it before you copy it all. The fourth piece of advice that makes you a really good coder is avoiding to duplicate code. Always prefer making a function that can be reused over hard coding the algorithm because the more variables you can reuse, the easier it will be to create an entire program and to add to it. If you create a function that adds two variables together, that will save you a lot more time than manually adding the same variables together each time with a different function. And essentially the way you should look at it is that you're building a castle of Lego and each function is a Lego block. So, I mean, the more different kind of Lego blocks you have, the better you'll be able to build this castle. But in general, just make sure your code is reusable, that you can actually create functions that can be reused and you'll have a much easier time with debugging and creating new code. And the final piece of advice for today is to try using naming conventions that make sense to you and to your colleagues. Don't just write something that says the function does something, write that it creates a new user, write that it creates a new user in a database, just make it as readable as possible. The major rule in naming conventions, of course, is that you make it readable so you can use it later. If you name a variable X or Y without any obvious reason behind it, it's going to make your code a lot harder to maintain because you can literally come back to your code one week later and not understand what any of it does. And that has happened to me so many times that I just write the variable is named hello just to save time or name the variable apple. And when I come back, I wouldn't really understand why is Apple in my get connection function. So you should definitely consider being descriptive and concise with your variable names over just randomly naming them. 
such as variable one, variable two, you will not really understand what that means later, unless it's a very small function, of course. But, um, but yeah, with that being said, that was some very easy advice to make you a better programmer. You just need to make sure that the code makes sense to you. And if you work with other people, you need to make sure that it makes sense to them as well. That's why naming conventions are important. Naming functions are important. Making sure your code is reusable is important. All of this is important to making sure your workflow continues to be productive. With that being said, as always, guys, if you have any advice or comments or anything you'd like to ask, just put it in the comment section down below. I love to read it and sometimes I even answer. But uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.